Our last video was an introduction to how to create a multilingual website in WordPress. In this video, we're going to look at some of the fundamental technologies that allow multilingual websites to exist at all. The first one we're going to look at is internationalization. Internationalization is often abbreviated I18N because there are 18 letters between the I and the N. And this may seem trivial at first, but in the world of people who do internationalization, it's a very common abbreviation, and so you'll probably see it. Internationalization is the process of using code, PHP in the case of WordPress, to allow your site or theme or plugin to be translated. So to be clear, this isn't translation. This is simply properly building your site so that it can be translated. The WordPress.org theme handbook has a wonderful section on internationalization about what it is, why it's important, and how it actually works. There's also a section on internationalization for plugins. The process is very similar between plugins and themes, but there are slight differences. Now, something I want to be clear about here is that if you're not a developer, you probably don't need to read these pages. What you do need is to be aware that they exist so that if you hire a developer, you can ask them to read these pages or if they have and understand what's on them. Now, the next term we're going to look at is localization, L10N. Oddly, there are 10 letters between the L and the N. Now, this is the process of using a translation tool to translate text into other languages. Localization is typically not done by web developers. If a website or theme or plugin is built properly, localization is done by someone who is skilled in that specific area. WordPress.org also has excellent documentation for localization, both for themes and plugins. Again, unless you are someone who does translation, you probably don't need to know all the deep details about localization, simply that this is what it's called, and that if you want a professional to translate your site, they should know about localization. They should understand those concepts. And so those are the kinds of things you need to be looking for on resumes and on the feature pages of companies that offer this service. It is the process of both internationalization and localization that allow tools like WPML, which we'll look at later, and services like Eclero that allow your website to be translated efficiently and in a cost-effective manner. In our next video, we'll take a look at how to choose a good theme, one that is translation-ready, so that you don't need to put a lot of extra work into it.